Hey, Firm Foundation, Pastor Blake here. Thanks so much for tuning in to our service. We hope that you were encouraged through the service today and that you were strengthened in your relationship with the Lord. We hope you enjoy the message today. God bless. Uh, you know, for many of us, uh, I think we are in this process of beginning a new season. Uh, I think this is something uh, it, the individually true for us, but I also believe that this is something corporately true for us. You know, summer is over and, and fall is beginning. The, the, the snow is coming, whether you like it or not, <laughs> but summer's over, the fall is beginning, school is back, and if anybody knows that more than anyone else, it's the teachers in the house this morning, uh, but school is back in session, and uh, for many of us, I, I think we're in the process of kind of reworking our schedules and our agendas, and we're finding new routines and uh, probably shifting our priorities as uh, we are in the, the process of starting this new season. Uh, even for us as a church, inside of our church calendar and schedule, we're, we're kind of entering into the fall. Connect Group started last week. Uh, this week, we're going to begin our prayer and worship nights. And, and so just a lot of newness that's happening and uh, things that the Lord is up to. And I believe that right now in the season for us as a church that we're going to begin paving the way for some incredible things that I believe the Lord is wanting to give to us. I believe there's some areas of growth that is coming, and, and the Lord is telling us to get ready because I am about to do something new in your midst. And so we are in the beginnings of new seasons. How many of you believe that to be true for you? All right, I see some hands. How about for us corporately? How many of you guys are kind of getting that same sense for us as a, as a church that God is in the process of doing something uh, new? And uh, I definitely feel the same and can agree with you in that. Um, and so the Lord is inviting us to take kind of the next step in life's journey. And as we begin to, to make these steps, he's calling us to keep moving Forward as we pursue the things that will uh, he will be putting right in front of us, and and maybe he's got something new for your marriage this year. Uh, maybe he's got something new that he's wanting to do in your family and your kids' lives. Uh, maybe there's a shift and a change that's in the horizon uh, for your job and the profession and what it is that you're pursuing every day. Uh, maybe he's in the process of realigning the ministry that he's been calling you to in this season of life. But I do believe God is telling us to move forward uh, to some new things. And so as we are beginning to make those steps that are ahead for us, I want to encourage you to be faithful to remain faithful, to follow his leading, his guiding, and know that he's got your back, uh, that he's going to be right there with you in the midst of these changes that are coming your way as he's shifting some things around us. And uh, as we're being faithful, what I believe is also important is that we finish the race. Uh, so we don't stop in the middle of those commitments and those new things that he's sending our way, but that we stay the course and we finish uh, you know, Paul in the New Testament has some incredible things in regards to starting a race uh, and finishing a race. Uh, as we're beginning new journeys and, and new callings, I think he gives us some instruction uh, as the church. And, uh, you know, the early church in those beginning stages, they experienced some incredible growth that was happening around them. And, and so Philippians 3 gives us some great instructions, and it tells us to keep on pressing forward towards that finish line, towards that place that God is calling us. And if you know Paul and a little bit about his story, uh, you would know that he was a very religious man. Uh, he was very religious and devout. He was actually a Pharisee in the very beginning of his story when we get to know him in the New Testament. Uh, but some things that he was doing also wasn't the best. Uh, but God got a hold of his life, he grabbed a hold of his heart, and he began to, to shift the dire his direction and his focus. And uh, what we could discover and see through Paul is that he was faithful in following exactly what it is that the Lord had for him. Uh, and so we see kind of, as he is encountering the manifest presence of the Lord, we see the shift in his goals, uh, his passions, his desires, and his priorities. Things begin to shift and change for him as he encounters the manifest presence of the Lord. 
And so what we begin to discover is that for the next 20 years, as he makes this change and as God begins to realign the direction of his life, we see him to be, that he starts to preach the good news about Jesus Christ. He starts to stand up and lead the early church through those uh, new beginnings that God had for him uh, and for them. And, and what Paul was doing was helping the early church to shift their ways of living to better reflect the kingdom of God culture. Uh, you see, Paul knew something. He knew that God saved him for a purpose. It wasn't just uh, for any random reason, but he knew it was very much so for a purpose. Uh, and so Paul said, I want to discover that, and he was faithful to that pursuit. Uh, God has done some, the, uh, some incredible things in our own lives, and I believe that he has saved you for a purpose. That it wasn't by accident, but he is wanting to turn your life around and point it in a direction that is very strategic inside of his kingdom. And so I want to encourage you this morning that you have a role to play. And it's a unique role that's just for you. And in order for us to advance and to to move forward uh, uh, into what God has planned for us, we need to remain faithful in those roles and functions that he is giving uh, to us in order to complete the body of Christ. Uh, I believe this, that we are blessed to be a blessing. Do you believe that to be true? God has blessed you, not just for you to hold on to it all for yourself, but so that in return you will be a blessing to the ones that he's put around you. Amen. Give it to me, Frankie. I like it. Help me preach this morning. (laughs) So turn with me to Philippians 3. I want you to see this instruction that's given to this early church is uh, they are gearing up for the newness that's coming their way. And we're going to begin reading uh, in verse 12. Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. It says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. All right, Paul's just starting off. Listen, I know I don't have it all figured out just yet, but here's what I know to be true. That's what he's saying as he opens up with this idea of pressing on towards a goal. He says, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and to receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Let us all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress that we have already made. Verse 17, dear brothers and sisters, pattern your lives after mine. And learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things. They think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies, like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. The title of today's message and what we're going to be talking about today is The Journey. The journey. Father God, we come to you today and we thank you for your word. We thank you that it's powerful, that it's sharp as any two edged sword, and that it pierces marrow and bone. And, and Father, we just invite you this morning to come and pierce our lives with your truth. Oh God, to open up our eyes to see you in ways that we've never seen you before. God, we want to follow you in this journey, in this thing that we call life, and we want to be spirit led. So, Lord, give us ears to hear you, eyes to see you, minds to be able to understand what it is that you're up to and hearts stirred towards compassion for each other and for your people today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. All right, so we're talking about the journey. You know, Paul had a goal that was in front of him, and he did his best at being faithful to that journey 
uh, that the Lord put in front of them. And so we see 20 years of ministry happen. He's encouraging the church. He's helping them move forward. And towards the end of that, uh, we see uh, he, we, he's, we, what we've seen from Paul's example is that he's seen some miraculous things that God has done. Uh, there's been some incredible moves of the Lord, but it always hasn't been difficult. Uh, they have met persecution. They met difficulty. They met people that weren't receptive to the gospel. Uh, but nevertheless, they say, saw God do absolutely incredible things. Uh, and so at the end of this time, uh, what, what do you think would be Paul's reward for serving him faithfully for 20 years? Maybe easier times, right? For things to progress a little bit more easily. But what we find out as we read the, the Gospels in the New Testament is that at the end of those 12 years of serving God faithfully, he had actually ended up in prison. Uh, and most theologians believe that most of these uh, books that were written to the New Testament church was from his prison cell. Uh, when he was writing to encourage them and strengthen them and, uh, and to tell them to keep following Christ. And, and so that was kind of Paul's reward at the end of it to end up in prison. Is that what you're hoping for you at the end of your career, right? For you all of a sudden just to get sidelined and, and be put in this place that doesn't feel like, oh, that's not what I expected and what I was hoping for. You know, if I, I look at Paul's life, he could have easily said, okay, maybe that's it for me. Maybe I'm done, right? Maybe, maybe it's time for me to just sit back and ride out the rest of the days of my life that the Lord wants to give to me. You know, maybe I'm at the final days of my journey and it's coming to a close and uh, maybe that's what he thought, that that's good enough for me. I'm done. Is that what he did though? No. If you know Paul's story, you know that he didn't give up uh, after those 20 years of serving the Lord and now being in prison. He didn't stop there, uh, but he had to make a decision. Uh, you know, he could have settled, but he kept being faithful to his journey. Uh, there was more for him to experience and to do. And so he had to decide if he was going to stay stuck in the past and not to keep moving forward, or he had to decide if he was going to keep pushing forward to the things that had yet been discovered. And I believe that's true for some of you here this morning. You think you've experienced all that life could throw your way, but the Lord is wanting to tell you this morning, there are things that you have yet to discover in my presence, in my plan, and in the journey of life that I have you on. Uh, our pastor down in South Texas used to say something, and I tried to write, write this quote down as best as I could remember it, so this might be a little bit off, but uh, from our pastor, Pastor Richard Hinojosa, uh, he made this statement, you know, if we want to see things that we've never seen before, then we must be willing to do things that we've never done before. It's so true. If we want to see things that we've never seen before, then we must be willing to do the things that we have never done before. And that's part of this journey that God has called all of us on. We need to be a people that is willing to step out and to step towards the new and the unknown and to do it without fear. You see, that's the part that can be hard for many of us. It's, we step out into the unknown, but we're so fearful of what's going to happen that uh, that fear just engulfs us and surrounds us, and it's difficult for us to even navigate and say, Lord, where are you in the midst of this newness? I feel overwhelmed. And so it's so important that we step into that unknown without fear. And as we are making those steps, we, we need to know that God has got our back. You need to know that this morning, church. He's not going to leave you alone, but he's going to help you navigate the new things that he has in store for you on the journey. Paul was absolutely convinced of that. He knew that God wasn't finished with him yet. His story wasn't over. Are you convinced of that today? That God isn't finished with you? That there's more for you, there's more for your family, there's more for your kids, there's more for this community that God has called us to? Here's what I know to be true for myself. God has so much more in store for me and my family. My story isn't over. And I want to challenge you this morning. Your story's not over. God has more that he wants to do in you and through you. He's not finished with this church. He's not. 
There is a story yet to be told, and there are incredible things that are ahead for us corporately together. Uh, He's not finished with the community around us. Uh, God wants to bring revival to our lands. You don't believe it. I just said it, and you look at me like, it's not going to happen, Blake. I'm telling you, he wants to bring revival here. He wants to bring revival to these cities, to this community, to your homes, to your life, and those areas where there's kind of been these dry and dead bones. Holy Spirit is saying today, listen to me, I am going to breathe life into you, and you are going to experience my reviving fires. But in order for us to get to this place of revival, it's going to require that we are a people that is looking forward and that is pressing forward. We can't just sit back. We can't settle on how things were, but we need to remember uh, this prophetic uh, word that is in the Bible. Behold, I am going to do something new. Uh, You remember the scripture the Lord spoke to us at the beginning of this year for 2022. He says, behold, I am getting ready to spring into action for my holy dwelling. Don't settle, church. Uh, The new season that's in front of us carries life-changing opportunities for us and for the ones that are around us. You know, in verse uh, 14, and I don't know what your Bible says, the beginning of this passage that we just read in Philippians 3, but it had this title of pressing on towards the goal. Uh, In the New Living Translation, it says, uh, I uh, will uh, press on to reach the end of the race. But there's other translations that use the wording, I press on to the goal. Uh, There's that finish line that's talked about. And if you look at the original language as you study this passage of Scripture, what you will discover is this is tied to the same goal of Jesus' life. Uh, And we know the aim and the direction of, of Christ was to be about the Father's business. Uh, his, what he wanted to do was to fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father. That was what his goal was. And so when we read this idea of reaching the end of the race, the finish line of pressing on to the goal, it's with this thing in mind that Paul is saying to fulfill the will of God. That's what I've called you to, church. And so we need to carry that same objective that Jesus has to be driven towards fulfilling the will of the Father. That's the goal. And that's the thing that I want us to achieve when we get to the end of the race for the Lord to look at us and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come and enter into my rest and my kingdom. You did so well. But a question that I have for us this morning, is that our daily prayer And is that the thing that's motivating our everyday lives to fulfill the will of the Father? You know, to understand the will of the Father, we've got got to pray. Uh, We've got to keep our spiritual eyes open. We, We have to be in His Word and we have to be daily being led by His Holy Spirit. And it's through those moments where He begins to align us and and He begins to give us His desires so that we are about the kingdom business. Uh, It's in those places where He begins to give us kingdom opportunities that we couldn't have made up on our own. Uh, It's in that place where He begins to shift our time commitments. It's in that place where uh, we begin to have kingdom conversations like we never expected to before and all of a sudden we're able to share the gospel in our workplaces Uh, we're able to shed the light of jesus in our school systems in our classrooms and it's when we are in this place of being surrounded in his presence it's where we have the desire to be driven towards kingdom actions where we're a part of building his kingdom And this is the kind of journey that I personally want to be on, and this is the the type of journey that I want us to be on together as a church. Forget the past. Watch and pray. And start moving forward. You see, I believe we need the mind of Christ as we step out of the old and as we begin to step into the new that God has for us. And what I believe God is saying is to be vigilant. To be vigilant, to be a people that is vigilant, to be aware of how he is shifting things around us, and to be aware of what it is that he's wanting to shift in us. 
and to not slip in this place of being lethargic. You see, I think the church has been asleep for a season. But in this season, he's telling us to be vigilant, to open up our spiritual eyes, to pray, to intercede, and to begin to believe for better. You know, as Jesus was in the garden with his disciples before he died on the cross and uh, before he had to suffer and die for the sins of the world, Jesus uh, was in the garden with his disciples and he said, let's pray and seek the, the heavenly father. Uh, but when you read the story, you see that Jesus does that, but the disciples, what happens? They fall asleep. <laughs> they become lethargic. They don't see the importance of what is about to happen and what's in front of them. And so Jesus goes to, to them and he says to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even for one hour? Keep, watch, and pray. I want you to write that down. Watch and pray. Keep, watch, and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. That's in Matthew 26, verses 40 through 41. You see, as the church, uh, I think we are in a season where we need to wake up. That we need to be aware of our kingdom assignments in this new season. We need to be watchful and we need to be praying. And I want to encourage you, don't give up on the goals, uh, directives, and the giftings that God has placed on the inside of you. Because there is a battle that's happening between our spirits and between our bodies or between our flesh, as it's worded in a lot of translations. Keep fighting the good fight. That's what Paul writes to the church, to keep fighting for the good fight of faith in order to, to build God's kingdom in your lives and in, the, the, in, in other people's lives that are around you. Be led by a spirit. You know, if we want to be able to hold on to uh, the things that he's wanting to do in this new season, I think it's so important that we lean in to, and to listen for those whispers that he's wanting to say to you in your quiet times. We practiced some of that on Wednesday night here with the Connect Group that was meeting uh, here at the church, and we took time just to, you know, we want to hear the voice of the Lord. A lot of times in order to hear the voice of the Lord, you're going to have to get quiet. And you're going to have to silence the noise that's around you so that you can hear the still, small voice, the, the whispers. And so if we want to know what it is that he's saying, we've got to quiet things down. We've got to slow down. When we're in these moments of worship, we have to lean in and ask for him to come and speak. And as we're reading his word, we need to ask him to let it come alive so that we can discern what it is that he's saying to us in this season of life. And together, I believe that there is a whole lot that you and I can accomplish if we continue to stay true to the journey. One of the things that's ine uh, inevitable is that we have an enemy that's fighting against us. And so we have to be aware of that. First uh, Peter 5, 8, you know this. It says, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy. Why does he say great enemy there? I think that's interesting, right? Watch out for your great enemy because he, he can get you so easily off course. We have to keep waging war. We've got to be aware of his plans and his strategies because if we aren't, then we're going to get sucked into this life that we aren't called to be living. And so he says, stay alert and watch out for your great enemy, the devil, for he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's after you. He's after your marriage. He's after your kids. He's after your grandkids. Watch with spiritual eyes and pray. We've got to be mindful of what he's up to. Because as we begin to move forward and begin to make progress in this new season that he's calling us to, we are going to encounter opposition. It's to be expected. There's going to be people shooting down your ideas, your God ideas. There's going to be opposition that as you are trying to advance in your journey, our enemy is out to oppress, discourage dilute the gospel, the truth. He wants to cause fear and doubt, and he's hoping that we will give up on the dreams that God has put in our heart even before the journey begins. And so you need to be aware of the enemy's strategy. I've shared this with you before, but this is the strategy of your enemy. 
is to distract, to deceive, it's to dislocate you, and ultimately his goal is to destroy you. He wants to distract us with things that we shouldn't be worried about. He wants to deceive us into thinking that what we are pursuing is most important when it's not really God's plan and dream for us in, in the journey. Uh, he wants to dislocate you from the church and godly community by picking up an offense. And he wants to ultimately destroy any chance that you have at being a kingdom builder. Be aware of his strategies. It's to distract, to deceive, to dislocate, and to utterly destroy you. But here's the good news. My Bible tells me that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. My Bible tells me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Our Bible says that we are called. Our Bible says that we are loved, that we've been bought with an incredibly great price of the blood of Jesus. Therefore, we are sons and daughters of the King. And He's a living God, and He wants to help you in this journey that you're on. He's going to help you from getting distracted. He's going to lead you so that you aren't deceived by what's not truth. He's going to keep you uh, founded in relationship and in church so that you aren't dislocated. He's going to help you destroy the enemy's plans that are trying to come against you so that you have victory. And so I want to tell you this morning, believe that you can affect change. You got to believe it before it ever happens. You can be a part of the change in your life in your family's life, in your workplace, but you've got, it's got to start here. It's got to start here in your mind before it gets down into your heart and before it pours out into action. You've got to believe that you can affect change. I need you to believe that you can impact those lives that are around you, wherever you're at. You have something to give. Uh, you have something meaningful to say. You are extensions of Jesus here in this world. You have something to give. You've got to believe that you can impact people's lives around you. You've got to believe that you can raise your kids in a way that leads them to following Jesus all the days of their life. You've got to believe it. It's got to start there. You've got to believe that your marriage is going to be vibrant. Uh, you've got to believe that you can impact your community. It all begins with just one, the one that you can touch. Uh, believe in those things and stop allowing the enemy to distract you, to deceive you, to dislocate you, and to destroy your journey. God has saved us for an incredible purpose inside of his kingdom. So keep on watching and praying. Turn to 2 Samuel chapter 5. I want you to see something. There's a story of David. And David was very good about being watchful and to continue on praying and allowing the Lord to direct him and to guide him. And so I want you to see this story and, and some strategy that's being given to him from the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 19 through 24. So David asked the Lord, should I go out to fight the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? And the Lord replied to David, yes, go ahead. I will certainly hand them over to you. So David went to Balperazim and defeated the Philistines there. The Lord did it, David exclaimed. And he burst through my enemies like a raging flood. So we named that place Balperazim, which means the Lord who bursts through. Some of you need that kind of God in your life right now. To burst through some situations that seem impossible, that seem hopeless. And this is who your God is, church. Let's keep reading. Verse 21. The Philistines had abandoned their idols there, so David and his men confiscated them. But after a while, the Philistines returned and again spread out across the valley of 
Rephaim. And again, David asked the, Philistine, uh, the Lord sorry, what to do. Do not attack them straight on, the Lord replied. Instead, circle around behind and attack them near the poplar trees. When you hear a sound like marching feet in the tops of the poplar trees, be on the alert. That will be the signal that the Lord is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. I want you to notice something here. God gives him strategy for two different battles. And it's a completely different strategy both times. And I want you to know that God will give you the strategy that you need to overcome the obstacles that are right in front of you as you are beginning this new journey. Some of the strategies that he's wanting to give to you are going to be very different than what you've done in the past to find victory in a season. Because he's wanting to give you a new strategy. He's wanting to do a new thing. What worked for you last time will probably not work this time in order for you to gain victory. We see here that David was in two different battles against the Philistine army, but the strategies David used to defeat them were so different. It was the same enemy, but different strategies. And what I know to be true is that God wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to be in your everyday, running around, going about life. And he wants to lead you and guide you through it. He wants to come in and help you navigate the journey of life that's in front of you. He has given you his Holy Spirit. Uh, And one of the Holy Spirit's attributes is that he is meant to be your guide. He's meant to be your compass like we talked about several weeks ago. And so listen, God is wanting to give you a new and a fresh strategy for the season that you're in front of right now. And so what you need to do is watch, pray, and ask the Lord, what is the strategy that you have for me right now in this season of life? What does it look like to parent my kids in this season? What does it look like for me to navigate my marriage differently in this season? What does it look like for me as I have conversations with coworkers? What's the new strategy you're wanting to give to me in this season of life, Lord? We need to allow him to be our guide. Listen, in Philippians 3, I think think Paul gives us some very clear instruction on what it looks like uh, to navigate the new seasons of life that uh, God is uh, asking us to step into. And and so here's three quick points that I want to leave you with this morning. If there's three things I want you to walk away uh, with from this message, it's going to be these three things. As we are in the journey, I think it's so important that point number one, we forget the past. Uh, You see this as a pattern in the Old Testament of instruction that's given to God's people, and you see this in the New Testament instruction, just like we read in chapter 3 of of Philippians. And, And some of us are stuck in past failures that keep us from moving forward. Uh, You can't seem see past your guilt and your shame, and it's holding you back. Uh, Others of us are stuck in past successes. And that's keeping us from embracing the new that God has for us in this new season. We can't see past our big ego uh, because we've had it figured out before and so we can figure it out on our own uh, again. I I have what I need. I am self-sufficient. I don't need anybody else telling me what to do. And we see our successes as uh, uh, that I can do it without anybody else helping me and guiding me. And there's others of us that are stuck in how things used to be. Uh, And we can't see now with eyes of hope for what's next. And I want to encourage us this morning to stop holding on to the things that need to be released, uh, that we need to let go of. It's going to keep you from your destiny. Uh, God has something new and better for you if you will just let go of whatever it is that you are holding so firmly to. Let me give you an illustration to help communicate what this is all about. You know, how many of you can uh, navigate your house in the dark? And, you know, some of you, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and you've got the munchies, you know, you're hungry, 
Uh, maybe you need a drink of water, or you know, for those of us that are starting to get older, you got to go to the bathroom uh, 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 during the night. And so instead of turning all the lights on and making a ton of racket, you know, we just try to do it quietly and we do it in the dark. And and so there's some of us that do probably a pretty good job of navigating our home uh, in the dark. Uh, uh, and so that's something that we can do pretty well. But what happens as your family grows? And you begin getting some new pieces of furniture, or maybe you start rearranging some things in your home because it's time for the new. It's time to to freshen things up and uh, to to be open to the new things that's there. And and when your spouse rearranges that chair and puts it in a place you're not familiar with, if you start to navigate that very same house the next day, what's going to happen? You're going to stub your toe. It's going to hurt. Uh, You may even fall. I mean, it's not going to be pretty. It's it's going to hurt a little bit. And I think this happens to to many of us as we're trying to enter into a new season. We just remember how it used to be, and we want it to stay that way forever. But as God is bringing growth and as he's beginning to shift and, and change some things in this new season of life, he's saying, I need you to be flexible. I don't need you looking in the past, but as you're entering this new season, Don't get stuck in your past. Uh, The second thing that we see in Philippians is that we need to press forward in the journey. As we are entering into a new season, uh, we need to embrace the new. Uh, We need to press forward because God is shifting some things. And as he's shifting some things, we don't need to resist this forward momentum that he's going to be giving to us. God is doing a new thing. He's getting ready to spring into action You know, I think this is something that's so hard for many of us, and it's something that I can struggle with in different seasons of life. I know that God has something new for me, but for whatever reason, I resist it. I kind of stand back from afar and say, are you sure that's what you want to do, Lord? Are you sure you want me to let go of these things so that you can give me something? There's no way it can be better than what I already have. You know, how many of you kind of are like that a lot of times when the Lord is inviting you into new seasons and new things that he's wanting to do? And it's so interesting because the ironic thing about it is that some of us can't wait for the release of the new phone that will be coming out at the end of this year. Uh, We can't wait for the release of that new car and those latest features. And, uh, you know, I don't know what is that new thing that you're looking forward to that's material in your life, but we can't wait for the new things. And we so quickly take the old thing and we throw it out because we love the new features and the accessibility and the greater graphics and acceleration that we find in the new things. But what happens with God? We resist the new. Is that backwards or what? (laughs) You want more power, but you don't want more power from him. You don't want that next level anointing. You're resisting it because you're saying, this is what I want because this is comfortable in what I know. But what God is saying is I have a new upgraded model for you. Receive it. Press forward. (laughs) In the journey, I want to encourage you to not give up. Don't you dare quit. Don't give up. God has so many incredible things in store for you. So don't give up in the journey. Don't quit. That's point number three. Uh, Philippians 3.16 said this. We read this together a moment ago. But we must hold on to the progress that we have already made you got to keep holding on to that progress and not give up. You have made more progress than you realize in your life, in your spiritual maturity. And sure, is there a next level of anointing that he has for you? Yes. But don't you dare get so critical of yourself that you get in this funk and you're willing to take a step back because you're not where you want to be. The enemy wants to deceive you. But God wants to spur you on and encourage you to keep going, son. Keep going, daughter. Um, Our pastor in Dallas, Pastor Robert Morris, uh, he said this at the end of one of the services at an invitation, and it's something that has stuck with me uh, over, gosh, this has probably been like 18 years ago. Some of you aren't even 18 yet. I know that classifies me as old now. Uh, but he made this statement at the end of a service, and it's something that God has had to speak over my life multiple times because it's so easy to be critical of ourselves. Uh, but it's also something that he's uh, uh, put, deposited my spirit to encourage you and others that are, are in this 
race and journey that you are doing better than you think you are. So keep holding on to that progress. Don't get so critical of yourself that you miss out on the momentum that you have in this season of life right now. Just because things get challenging, or maybe you don't have everything that you need in this moment, or, or maybe it feels like you are taking steps backwards, or maybe it feels like you're in this trap of this kind of waiting game and waiting season in order to see that promise of God fulfilled in your life. As you're there, don't quit. But hold on to the progress that you have already made. In, the journey, in this journey of life, we need to forget the past. We need to press forward. And we do not need to quit. And in closing, I want to share this passage of Scripture with you in closing to, uh, to help further solidify what I believe the Lord is speaking to us today. Uh, but in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Would you stand with me this morning? And as you're standing, I want to encourage you to watch, to pray, and to ask the Lord for new strategy in this season of life. So with every head bowed, with every eye closed, we're going to ask the question that we ask at the end of every single service. And that question is, is what is the Holy Spirit saying 